Hey folks, welcome back to another review with yours truly, Sam Healy. Today we're taking a look at this guy right here, Ninja Squad. This is a game designed by Yan Yurgarov and put out by Backspindle Games. Probably going to be put out by Ninja Division as well. Over here in the States, Backspindle is over in Ireland, so uh, we'll see. Uh, but uh, it is basically a game that, uh, about ninjas. <laughs> A squad of ninjas uh, going in and trying to take out this uh, evil governor guy at his palace and then get back out. But it comes with three game modes. Uh, a cooperative mode where you're trying to get into the palace. A competitive mode where you're trying to race out and be the only ninja left alive standing, basically. And you also have a super speedy ninja mode, which is uh, a timed variation. So uh, we'll explain briefly, at the very least, each of those modes. Uh, but let's get down to the table. I'll show you how all the basic mechanisms work. And then we'll come back with some final thoughts in just a few moments. Let's hit it. So here I have a three-player game of Ninja Squad set up for you. And uh, basically what Ninja Squad is, in its basic form, which is what I have shown, shown here, is a cooperative race down to the palace so that uh, we can assassinate the governor or you know the bad dude that lives there or whatever it might be and that's the basic mode is that we're all trying to get there uh, we're trying to beat the uh, alarm tracker uh, in a three-player game if the alarm tracker reaches 21 before all of the ninjas have reached the palace then the game ends and the and the players have lost but if everybody if all the players get down there in a three-player game before it reaches 21 then they have won at the beginning of the game, everybody flips over the top card of their movement deck, and then at the beginning of your turn, you're going to flip over a second card, and that'll give you an option of which movement card you want to choose. On the movement card, you'll see that you have one square that is uh, red, and then you have other uh, squares that are white. The red is where your ninja is currently moving, and the white squares are the squares that you're going to move through uh, and then ultimately end your turn. So, for example, if I wanted to here, uh, I'm the, uh, uh, the orange ninja. I'm going to have to move to the sideways and then diagonal, and these are both the same cards, so I don't really have a whole lot of choice. So I think what we'll do is we will start here and we will move sideways and then diagonal, which will put me right there. Both of these cards are put into my discard pile. And then for my next turn, I flip over my next card and so that I have an idea of one of the options that I'm going to be using on my next turn. Next, we have uh, this player here and they're going to have those two abilities. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to start him right here. And he is going to move sideways, one, and then forward, two, like that. Just like a knight in chess. And then that is becomes part of his discard pile. This gets flipped over for his next turn. There is not a uh, fourth player over here. That deck, we'll get to that in just a few moments. Over here, we're going to flip over this card. And we have a leap action where you can actually jump over and skip the middle square here and land in one two squares away or you have this right here um, So I think what we'll do is we'll start right here and we'll leap over this guy Why would I want to leap over one of the guards? Well because this way if I run if I move through a spot that has a guard in it I have to take care of that guard I'm forced to take his life and then I'm going to have to dispose of the body which takes extra time so if you ever end your movement uh, in a guard square, you have to discard the next two cards from your movement deck, and then you skip your next turn. So uh, you want to avoid the guards if at all possible. Some of the different weapon cards that you may be able to get as you move through some of these uh, red, red cubed squares. Uh, we'll be able to let you take out guards from a distance so you, you don't have to uh, worry about the penalty. You also do have a star that you carry um, that is a one-time use that you can use to take out a guard in a dire circumstance. But in this situation, I was able to jump over that guard and he is none the wiser. Then we come back to my second turn. I'm going to go ahead and flip over this card. And I am this guy right here. So, oh... Uh, I am in some uh, a little bit of a bad spot here, but that's okay because 
I'm going to have to uh, move into the light and the light is not good for ninjas. So uh, we're going to, we have to take this lantern cube that we've moved through. All right, so now we have a lateral move here or we have a diagonal move here. So the diagonal move is probably gonna be the better spot. Yeah, it will because we're gonna go one, two, like that uh, using this one right here. Okay, so now we have these two options in place for this ninja right here. And so uh, the only options that these allow him are to go forward and then one, two, which is off the playing board. He can't do that. Forward and then one, two. You can't end your space in another, uh, where another ninja is. Uh, so that's this one. We can't use that. This one here uh, allows you to go to the side and then diagonal one, which takes you off the board. And then to the side and diagonal one here, which puts him right here. So in this case, he he has to freeze. You can never pass. If you have a valid option that even if it's going to put you in the street or it's going to put you on top of another uh, guard or something like that, you must take it. But in this particular case, uh, he's either going to end off the board or where another ninja is. He can't make those moves. So he has to freeze, which means that both of these get discarded. He stays right there and then he prepares for his next turn. Now once everyone has taken six moves then we go to the guard phase and in the guard phase we have a certain number of things that have to take place in a specific order. First thing that happens is all of the patrolling guards move and that's what these red guards are. They are going to move along their path that is prescribed on the board so we go ahead and do that for all of them. And then the alarm tracker moves forward automatically six spaces. So it goes all the way to six. Like then each lantern that was picked up because ninjas had to move through the light are going to spawn new guards on the board. So all four of these cubes mean that uh, these four guards here are going to be coming onto the board. The Now what we do is we look at the head lead ninja, the one that's in the lead here, and we go to the board that is ahead of him and we drop them about three inches away from the board and wherever they land that's where they come up all right like that so the guards have come up because ninjas were seen or detected running through the light next alarm cards are drawn and applied for any ninja that is out in the streets so we have one ninja right here so alarm token is raised is drawn so this guy has to move back one space. So we'll put him back this way, just like that. This is a giggling geisha card. It makes him move back one space. And so there is that. Uh, these guys were both on the rooftops, so no cards need to be drawn for them. Then anybody who had Senjutsu uh, cubes in front of them that pass through one of these green spots on the board, they're going to be able to be awarded Senjutsu cards. So we have one come here and then one goes over here as well. We'll put it right there like that. The first player token moves to the next person in uh, clockwise order. And then we rotate the decks. So these decks are then going to be shuffled again. This deck is going to come over here. This deck is going to go over into the uh, off spot. This one's going to come over here. And then this one is going to come over here and will need to be reshuffled. And everybody flips over their first card for movement. And we're ready for another round to begin with this player being the first person to go. Now, Senjutsu cards can be played at any point during your turn. So more than likely during the uh, two turns that these guys are going to take, they're going to, of course, play both of those cards, which will lower the alarm tracker by one each, putting it back down to four. Uh, because if you kind of get the idea, if you allow it to move six every single turn, eh, you're going to probably not make it. On the other side of the board, this is the actual race to get back to the blue forest over here from the palace. And uh, this is where the game actually takes a competitive mode where you actually start with three traps that you can lay out to kind of hinder the progress of your other fellow players here. You're also going to be uh, entering into some buki cards, which are basically just weapons uh, that can be used uh, in a number of different ways. You can swap places with your other ninjas. Uh, you can shoot flaming arrows at people. Nunchucks take people out. Um, you can swap the places of a couple of different guards. 
uh, you can move through water uh, unhindered, which is another thing that this side of the board features where you have water tiles uh, in here. So whenever you enter a water tile, you have to stop your movement and then movement from then on is one air, oh, one square uh, per turn so that can seriously hinder your movement there so uh, these kind of cards here that if you can get them will actually help you move a lot faster through the water because you're actually swimming underneath the water uh, and being undetected at that point as well so uh, the the me mechanisms involved here are the same as before uh, you just have a couple of different things that are going on you're not cooperatively trying to do anything anymore you are trying to uh, hinder your opponents and make yourself go forward as quickly as possible because the person who gets to the blue forest first will be the winner of this mode. So in the super speedy ninja mode, all of the same rules apply as far as the midnight run on the other side of this board is concerned. Uh, but there is uh, in a two player game, the uh, movement phase for the ninjas have to take has to take place in a minute and a half. Uh, that's for all three of the ninjas, uh, or, f or two of the ninjas. In, in a three-player game, uh, you get two minutes for all three ninjas to make all six of their moves. And then in a four-player game, you get two and a half minutes for all four ninjas to make all six of their moves. But that's, generally speaking, uh, how Ninja Squad plays. All right, so that's about that. Of course, I didn't show you every single detail or a bit of minutia in the game. Uh, I just wanted to give you a basic idea of how the game works and, and so that you could understand how everything kind of fit together. Uh, but as you can see, the, the three different modes feel very different uh, a, a, as far as complexity and a level of involvement is concerned. The cooperative mode is, of course, the easiest and simplest and most laid back. And then you have the competitive mode of where you're trying to race back out and get out to the, the Blue Forest, and, and that's a little bit more heavy, cutthroatish, take that feeling to it. And then Speedy Ninjas kind of just throws everything into the wind and sees where it lands because uh, the level of involvement and excitement and uh, frustration even maybe uh, is really ramped up in that speedy ninja mode so uh, there you have it but with all that being said let's go ahead and talk about my pros and cons now first of all my my, my first con is is very simply uh, I love the artwork and the models that come in it the miniatures are also very cool I'm not that big of a fan of chibi models but there's not a whole lot of them there's only four models in the box so if you wanted to go ahead and paint them you could probably take your time it wouldn't take that time that long at all uh, but you don't even need to paint them because they all come in different colors and that's that's one of the bonus points about this whole idea of the components here is that you don't have to paint anything you don't have to do anything all of the components are really pretty well done as far as everything is uh, concerned and considered my second pro is the gameplay. Gameplay is very simple and fun and, and uh, rewarding uh, for the most part. There is a little bit of a luck of the draw uh problem, I guess you could call it, that's going on here uh, because uh, there... Uh, it really does depend how far you can move, what kind of cards you're going to get. If you get a lot of lateral movement cards, you're not going to go forward very fast. But the caveat to that, I guess, is that uh, all of the different decks are going to be circulating. So at some point, you're going to be able to get rid of that deck that has all of those lateral moves in it and get some of the ones that have some more forward movement in it. So there is that. But the gameplay itself is, is fast fun. There's hardly any downtime at all. Uh, you're always involved in everybody's actions because you're wanting to make sure that they're making their moves correctly and uh, helping them with if, if uh, they have to deal with a guard or something to that effect. So uh, all of that is, is there and it's fun and it's light for the most part except for the uh, competitive and speedy ninjas mode. Uh, but the mechanisms don't change. It's just a little bit different way of playing it. So the gameplay is fun and enjoyable. And as far as my third pro is concerned, I, I mentioned artwork during the components, but um, I'll, I'll mention it here again, but more in a graphic design kind of way. I liked how the different elements of the board uh, really kind of uh, brought out some of the different mechanisms. For example, the, the lanterns, the light spots of the area. Uh, the moving guards was another cool thing, but that's kind of a graphic design choice because it has to be on the board. Uh, on the other sides of the board, during the daytime where you're trying to get out of the palace, uh, all of the 
the bushes and the trees that are there provide cover. Uh, so it, it looks artistically great, but it's also mechanically sound as well. So I liked how the graphic design really kind of tried to pull everything together here uh, with how the game works and, and different things that will affect the gameplay, the water spots on the board. It could have just been a, a, a an artistic flair, but it wasn't. It was actually another mechanism. So I liked how the graphic design and the artwork and mechanisms all kind of flowed together in this. So that was a really cool thing for me. Now, as far as some cons of the game are concerned, um, first of all, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the Speedy Ninjas mode of the game at all. Um, be, it just, the, that the the real time part of it mixed with the, uh, the 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 random card draw of of the different decks that are involved just were kind of butting heads a little bit too much for me because I felt like I was just too restricted on what I could do um, and it just was not fun uh, real time uh, fast paced type games are usually not my forte anyway. But here, it's especially so because I, I don't like the speed aspect of it, but mixed with the random nature of, your, of the card draws and how you don't really have a whole lot of uh, um, control over what cards you're going to be able to choose from, I uh, don't really like that uh, at all. Didn't like it at all. So that was a, a con for me. Uh, and that's probably a mode that I will never play again uh, because it's just not fun at all. While we're talking about the game modes, though, I won't take up another uh, con for this, but the competitive mode, I didn't really see a need for it. The name of the game is Ninja Squad. So we are a squad of ninjas that have been sent on a mission. Um, so the cooperative nature makes sense. We've been sent to accomplish a goal, and we are a squad. We're a team. We're supposed to work together. Um, but for some reason, once we accomplish our goal, now we are at each other's throats <laughs> and we don't want anybody to make it out. We just want to make it out. And it turns from a uh, ninja squad to just ninja <laughs> because you're no longer working together. And that just did not make any thematic sense to me uh, at all. I understand why you want to put in another game mode and, and provide for some different kinds of player interaction, you know, with the take that and, and, and throwing uh, traps and stuff like that in, in the way of your, your opponents and stuff. I get it. I understand why the decisions were made. I just don't agree with the decision because I thought it thematically went against uh, what the game was all about. My second uh, con of the game is that it definitely has a runaway leader problem, especially in the competitive mode. Um, well, only in the competitive mode, really. But if you have one guy that gets uh, f too far out uh, ahead, there's really not a whole lot that you can do to kind of reel him back in. Uh, it is simply based on luck, on whether or not you're going to be able to get the right cards in front of you, whether or not he has bad luck uh, to get cards in front of him that can put a lot of lateral moves and you have a lot of forward moves. Um, but at the end of the day, you didn't really do anything of worth to reel him back in. It was just luck of the draw on your on your part and bad luck of the draw on his part. So I didn't really like that. I thought that was unfortunate because, um, for example, we played a game last night uh, in preparation for this review. And uh, one of my sons got clearly a, a whole board ahead of me and my other son. And we just couldn't do anything. We couldn't set any more traps because you can only set traps in the square that's around you. He was too far away. We couldn't catch up to him. And his cards were not coming up in such a way that were hindering him. At the same time, our cards were not coming up in such a way that would help us get out there to him to where we can maybe uh, hinder his path a little bit more. So all in all, I'm going to give this one a 6 out of 10 because I did enjoy the basic idea of the game and the mechanisms that were involved were, were fun for the most part. Um, if if it were a full-on cooperative game where you get in and get out and they just kind of left that Speedy Ninjas uh, mode out of it, uh, maybe cleaned up a couple of the other things, uh, this, I could probably see this being a seven, seven and a half for me. But as is with all the different modes, it's, it's, it's a six because frankly, I only really enjoyed one third of the game. 
Um, the, the competitive mode was not that fun for me and the speedy ninjas mode was not fun at all for me. So I only really enjoyed one third of the game, but the artwork, the components, uh, how the graphic design worked with the mechanisms, uh, those are all things that kind of lifted it back up to a six for me. I, I do think there's going to be a lot of people out there that enjoy this and especially the variety of the different modes. I just, I'm just not one of them. So it's, it's a six out of 10 for me for Ninja Squad. Thanks for joining me. I certainly appreciate it. We'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care.